Welcome back. President Biden is in Warsaw for the final stop of his trip to Europe as he hopes to better coordinate the West's response to Russia's aggressions. Newsmax correspondent Alex Salvi is live in the Polish capital with the latest. Alex? Amanda, a meeting is currently underway between President Biden and his Polish counterpart, Andrzej Duda, one that will likely build on talks that started on Thursday back in Brussels. You, you may remember that Poland and the United States had a little bit of a complication when it came to getting those MiG fighter jets to Ukraine, either directly or indirectly. They are looking to get on the same page. But the president started off the day by speaking with some of the people that know this reality better than anyone else when it comes to the conflict inside of Ukraine. He attended talks with Ukraine's foreign minister and defense minister, a last-minute addition to the schedule. The Ukrainian officials are currently in Warsaw for planned meetings with their American counterparts, Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin. But this was the first meeting between the president and the Ukrainian foreign minister since the start of the war on February 24th. Now, later in the day, President Biden will speak, be speaking with Ukrainian refugees. As we know, 3.5 million people fleeing Ukraine, over 2 million landing right here in Poland. But the president announcing earlier this week that the U.S. will be taking in 100,000 Ukrainians and we get, may get some further action as well. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan telling reporters that the president will be delivering a, quote, major address, one that we're hearing this hour will be attended by Ukrainian officials as well. Sullivan says it'll be a speech that will speak to the stakes of the moment and the challenges that lie ahead. Amanda. Alex Savvy live in Poland. Thank you for breaking down kind of what the last week has looked like with the president and the situation there. Performance measure up to your expectations coming into this meet tonight. I, I didn't have a whole lot of expectations for this meet. I was just happy to be here trying to race and compete as best as I could. All right, transgender athletes such as collegiate swimmer Leah um, Thomas that we just heard prompting a nationwide debate over male and female sports competitions. Parents and coaches, even spectators all over, offering their own points of view on this very important issue. Yeah, joining us now is to talk. Actually, a controversial the thought process that we want to hear, but transgender advocate, journalist, professor at Harvard University and contributor to Forbes.com, Dawn Ennis? Yes, that's correct. Okay, Ennis. So, uh, thank you for joining us. Now, look, folks at home, look, this is, this is, uh, I know nothing about the whole transgender thing. I have my personal views. I think that, you know, women shouldn't compete in men's sport and vice yeah. versa. However, this is a debate for us to maybe learn something, but also hash some things out respectfully, of course. So, you know, let's let's get to it. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm yeah, here well, for welcome. it. Welcome. Sure. I'm I guess so there's, a, there's, there's a lot of controversy with with Leah Thomas, the swimmer. A lot of people and coaches say that, you know, a transgender should uh, compete against trans transgenders. How do you feel about that? Well, the first thing is if we only had a transgender only league, there wouldn't be enough competitors to actually form a league. Mm -hmm. There's maybe 200, I think more like 150 transgender athletes in the entire world. Mm -hmm. wow. So. Leah Thomas would be basically competing against herself or against a trans man who also swam at NCAAs. Mm -hmm. It's just that there aren't enough people. It, it seems as if there's a lot of transgender athletes based on the news coverage, sure. but it's a very small percentage. There's only 1.5 million trans people who are out in America, mm -hmm. and of that, very few transgender athletes. Yeah, I think a lot of people, I have three daughters, they play in sports, and so uh, a concern to some is that they have an unfair advantage um, when you, you know you, you have um, people you know at, at the athletic level, whether you're mm. in college or you're a professional athlete. How do you feel about that? I wouldn't dispute that puberty, male puberty, mm -hmm. gives transgender female athletes an advantage. Right. What has to be determined is, is it an unfair advantage? And the science isn't there yet. All the science they've done so far is men versus women, transgender average people like me who sit on our couches versus people like yourself. Mm -hmm. They haven't done a study about elite transgender athletes who are women versus cisgender, which means not transgender okay. athletes. If they do a, si a study on that, we'd have a better uh, determination. But I think this study right now, Leah Thomas went from 430-something ranked in the men's league to blowing it out of the water, literally, um, in, in, um, in, in women's swimming. Like, look, I'm a competitive powerlifter. I don't hold a candle to the men's leagues, and I've gone and competed. I don't even make the leaderboards. Like, we're talking top 100. But I can walk onto a platform cold right now and smoke the women's world deadlift record. I mean, that's not... Do you, you, you think I wouldn't, that's fair? I wouldn't expect that you would want to transition and yeah. compete. And no athlete who's transgender does that just to win a trophy. Leah also lost. Leah tied for fifth and finished eighth in the mm -hmm. NCAAs. Yeah, she set some conference title records. She even, you know, did very well mm -hmm. in the Ivy League. 
but she's not always winning. And there are a lot of women, cisgender women, who were competing against her who are doing better. Right. Every cisgender athlete I spoke to when I covered the NCAAs said that it was great competing against a competitor who swam so fast. They didn't think it was unfair. Mm -hmm. So here's a question, though. This is more controversial. There was, you know, I saw a video of, of you engaging with somebody else. Now, I have a daughter. I have a nine-year-old daughter. Okay. I have two. Okay. So you have a daughter, <laughs> too. So you have to see the, the, the aspect of, of a mother standing outside a bathroom saying, look, I'd prefer you not to go in while my daughter's in there. Do you, can, can you at least recognize how uncomfortable that might be? I mean, it would make me uncomfortable, to be honest. So do you, can you respect that, or, or do you think that which, those norms should be eradicated? Because trans women are women and trans girls are girls, I believe women's spaces include trans people. Carl, on this couch, there's only one penis. I'm not a threat to any woman any space. You asked me earlier before we went on the air if I had had the surgery. Yeah. Now, it shouldn't matter whether or not I have that kind of male apparatus. I don't. But even so, transgender women don't go in bathrooms to look at women. We go in there to take care of our business, right. check our hair and makeup, and then get out. But for someone like me who's admitting, like, like, I don't know about the whole transgender process. I don't know anything about this stuff. So, sure. Happy so, to help you. Yeah, but, and, and that said, like, I, I think, like, always a respectful debate here. I mean, I'm, I would still be uncomfortable if, uh, you know, a, a trans person, a trans formerly male turned female went to a bathroom with my nine-year-old daughter. But can, can you see how some people might still be a little hesitant to accept that? As a parent, yeah. I'm very much concerned about my children. I think okay. we should always sure. respect parents' concerns. I'm not saying that you can't have the right to be concerned about it. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to say is there is no danger. All these concerns about the bathroom predator it's just a myth, and it's cooked up to try and, you know, generate base and generate votes and to actually scare people and make us feel marginalized and yeah. othered. Yeah. Uh, I would say that the biggest problem, the biggest problem right now is that trans people, when they go into the bathroom, they're the ones who are attacked. The numbers are off the charts in terms of how many times a trans person is attacked or even a cisgender woman, a non-trans woman, who looks too masculine. Mm -hmm. There's been lots of reports of women who are lesbian or just butch, who are dragged out of uh, ladies' rooms because someone thought they were trans. Yeah, you know, I want to go back to to, um, to sports because Please. you were covering um, the NCAA That's championships correct. recently. What was the mood like there? Is there support for, for Leah or is there, what is it like? What were people saying? I would say for the most part, people went silent when Leah Thomas's name was mentioned, but there were boos. And I think part of that is because they were ticketed members of the Save Women Sports and Standing for Women from the UK who were in attendance who mm. wanted to make their case known. They have every right to protest. That's the American yeah. way. Mm -hmm. Our little confrontation that you referred to, it was unfortunate because I was just doing my job. I wasn't there as an advocate. Right. Mm -hmm. I was there as a journalist. Right. And I was interviewing someone when this woman interrupted me to yeah. say, stay out of our spaces, our women's spaces. Yeah. And all I can say to that is I respect her feelings. But I'm no danger, and no, neither is any trans woman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Don well, Ellis, we, we really appreciate you coming. Appreciate you coming to the Lions, then too. <laughs> we you, you, know, you, coming you knew it was going to be a tough interview, morning. so we appreciate it. I think it. it was a great interview, and I'm, yeah. I'm Life After Dawn is my Twitter. And if anybody has questions, anybody, now you know a trans person, come get me. All right, Don. Thank you <laughs> okay. so much. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.